Hello, welcome back aboard USS COD. I'm COD Director Paul Ferrace, and today we've got a very interesting combination of hidden history, uh, amazing uh, near-death escape, and some scatological uh, humor, all combined into one with some engineering uh, discussion um, about the history of the COD. Uh, as you can see, we're standing here in the forward torpedo room of USS COD, and I'm standing just outside the officer's head. Now, this is one of four as built aboard USS COD. It's an air expulsion head, which means that it has to flush against sea pressure with every use. So those, uh, those valves and levers and wheels you see are all critical to properly flushing the head. If you don't follow the uh, instructions properly, you'll get baptized or the chocolate chips. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about uh, something that happened to Cod that almost caused the uh, the loss of the boat, uh, but it wasn't directly related to the, uh, the toilet or head, uh, but it certainly involves it. On one of our first three patrols, COD was running on the surface, as these boats would do uh, virtually all the time. And apparently our lookouts were not as attentive as they could have been. Uh, they didn't spot the Japanese uh, aircraft that was diving uh, on us from our stern, I'm told, out of the sun until the very last moment. Um, the plane uh, uh, obviously dropped a bomb the COD uh, did an emergency crash dive. The diving alarm went off and, uh, of course, simultaneously with the collision alarm. Now, let's move here to the forward room. Uh, Frank Kimball, our engineering officer, uh, was off duty and had to answer the call of nature. So he's in the officer's head. The door, of course, is closed. And it's just a natural uh, duty that he's doing until he hears the uh, collision and the diving alarm go off. So he realizes, uh-oh, something important has happened. Uh, the Japanese plane managed to drop a bomb that entered the water behind us, went under the cod, and exploded as we're diving. Now, of course, fleet boats want to dive at a seven, eight, maybe nine degree down angle to get under the quickest possible time. Well, the bomb went under our stern, exploded, lifted the stern up, and now we're diving, I'm told, probably something in excess of 30 degrees, maybe 40 degree down angle, which means that you can lose control of the dive. So now COD is diving at a radical angle, and our test depth, of course, being a Gato boat, is 300 feet. Well, very quickly, the forward torpedo room is in excess of 300. It's in excess of 450 feet. Uh, we'll talk about just how deep it may have been in a moment. But Frank is in here, and uh, when he hears the bomb explode, uh, and then realizes the boat is now taking a crazy down angle, he realizes, this is not where I want to die. Uh, so he gets ready, pulls up his pants apparently, and he cannot get the door open. Uh, because by this time, in, in such a short time, just mere moments from the explosion, um, I'm told by the men in the control room, um, the COD had passed the 450-foot diving, uh, maximum diving depth marked on our deep water gauge. So we can only assume that 120 feet forward, with a crazy 40 uh, degree down angle that perhaps the forward room was in excess of 530 feet. Uh, and at that depth, the hydrostatic pressure, the sea pressure squeezing the, uh, the ribs, and, and these are the ribs in, in the torpedo rooms of fleet boats, the ribs are inside the pressure hull. Uh, throughout the rest of the boat, they are outside the pressure hull in the ballast tank. So at something in excess of 530 feet, these ribs have compressed enough to warp the, uh, the framing here of this, uh, this modesty uh, enclosure around the head such that Frank can't get the door open. And he's kicking, he's punching it, doing everything he can, because again, it's not where he wants to die. Uh, and it's not until the uh, men in the control room get a hold of the dive and plane up uh, to a lesser depth 
that the hydrostatic pressure is relieved. Uh, the frames go back to their normal uh, uh, orientation and the stress isn't transferred to the door frame. Now he can get out. Um, the boat survived, apparently without any real structural damage. Uh, I think the, the, the worst fallout that occurred as a result of this is that Frank, every time the boat went to, uh, uh, to uh, general quarters, of course, Frank's uh, general quarter battle station was uh, in the control room uh, as uh, the chief uh, uh, diving officer. So he was sitting, as he would be expected, on the, uh, the stool uh, just below the conning tower hatch. And to monitor the bow and stern planesmen. But every time after that, when Cod went to battle stations, Captain Dempsey uh, would uh, look at Frank and say, Frank, get to your battle stations. And of course, Frank said, Captain, I'm here. And he said, forward crapper. A little bit of humor. Um, so that's uh, an interesting story. And it's really mind boggling to consider that, you know, as soundly built and, 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 and heavily uh, built as Cod is, 530, 540 feet down, uh, we've had enough uh, uh, hydrostatic pressure building up, building up that would transfer the, uh, uh, the stress to this box and jam that door. Um, now, if you're familiar with uh, Captain Flucky of the Barb, of course, we knew him. We were honored to know uh, the Admiral the last decade of his life. Uh, he often talked about taking Barb, a, another Gato-class boat, uh, down below the 450 foot uh, depth mark on the deep water gauge. And um, when asked, you know, how do you know how deep the boat is? He said, I calculated with my slide rule that at about 520 feet, the hydrostatic pressure would be sufficient uh, in the forward torpedo room to cause the diamond plates that uh, are here in the center line. Uh, we have them covered with this rubber matting, uh, which uh, uh, there is uh, precedence for in, in combat submarines. But it would cause the diamond plates in the center to buckle up at about 520, 530 feet. And so when he had to go very deep on the rare occasion to escape Japanese depth charges, uh, he would have the steward's mates keep an eye on these deck plates. And uh, they would report to the captain, they're buckling up now, sir. And he knew uh, that's where he wants to level off and stay and, and not go any deeper. Um, how's that for a hair raising uh, uh, indication uh, of how deep you are? That uh, sure beats the old string across the component. Anyway, uh, we thought we'd share that with you today. Remember to hit the like, uh, the subscribe, and the notification bell, and we'll be back for more. Thank you.